This past weekend, the Carolina Hurricanes split their weekend back-to-back but with the Toronto Maple Leafs and Boston Bruins, and there has definitely been some controversy surrounding the game against the Bruins, and we will discuss both games and hear from players and Rod Brindamore in this episode of Locked on Hurricanes. Your Locked on Hurricanes, your daily podcast on the Carolina Hurricanes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Caniacs. I'm your host, Jared Ellis, and you're listening to Locked On Hurricanes on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And as always, thank you for making Locked On Hurricanes your first listen of this Monday afternoon. And in today's episode, we'll be recapping this weekend's games against the Boston Bruins and the Toronto Maple Leafs, starting with the Leafs, since that's the game that happened first. So diving on into that game, that was a game where the Hurricanes were able to come away with the win, first off. And I just dropped my notebook on my dog. So, you know, we're it's a Monday. It's a Monday, folks. But again, the Hurricanes were able to come away with the 5-3 win against the Toronto Maple Leafs, but this was not a perfect game by any means. Yes, Pyotr Kochekov made 41 saves. That's the most by any Hurricanes goaltender this season so far, which is fantastic for him. But again, not a perfect game. And you know, the Hurricanes they were able to go out to a early 2-0 lead, but the back half of the first period and the entirety of the second period was controlled by the Toronto Maple Leafs. They were able to come back, tie it up at two. And, you know, the Hurricanes were lucky to be going into that third period only tied at two. And that really comes down to the goaltending. And, you know, same goes for the game against the Bruins. Yeah, they lost that one. But goaltending is really what kept them in both of these games because these games could have gotten a heck of a lot worse. You know, actually, you know, following you know that game against the Leafs, you know, uh, with all the chances you know that both teams had, you know, expected goals were you know Leafs six, Hurricanes two, and you know the Hurricanes came away with a five three win. So they were extremely lucky in that game against the Leafs, and you know I think you know Steph Nazan's goal was a really really big momentum shift there and this is what Steph Nazan had to say after the game because you know again in my opinion his goal was what really shifted the momentum in that game against the Leafs well, I like Steph Sebastian was saying, and obviously it's a tough stretch of games, but he enjoys this kind of competition, playing the best teams. Is that the way you feel about it? Uh, it's playoff hockey. Who doesn't like playoff hockey? I know it's still regular season, but each game is meaningful. Each game we're playing against teams that are gearing up for the playoffs, and uh, nothing better. Can this help you getting ready for the playoffs? These kind of games. Yeah, I mean it's lessons. It'll be. Yeah, it's lessons learned. It's you know sometimes it's not going to go our way. You got to find a way to you know, crawl out of that. And I think we started out really well. And as you saw, like probably halfway through that second period or the first period, we kind of left the gas. And that's a good hockey team when you give them time and space. And um, you know they made us feel that for you know a good solid you know another period and a half after that, and we found a way. You guys are getting to the point now where you're starting, even though you guys are getting wins, you're starting to get really kind of self, uh, look for the word, but you're kind of analyzing every part of the game to make sure it's perfect. Is that kind of the craft you guys are following right now? Uh, yeah, I think you're looking for attention to detail. Uh, that's, you know, that's a big part of our game. It's, you know, the way the way we do things is pretty simple. Um, you know, it's kind of bulletproof, and, uh, you know, we didn't have it for the, for the first little or the, little half there and um like i said we, we found a way and you know, it's not, sometimes you gotta do that what got it turned around when it was going so bad there for so long uh simplifying i think you know i've i'd be the first one to you know tell you we were trying to do a little too much i think i made a couple of really errant passes that <laughs> let's be honest that's not really my game but um you know just feeling like making making plays and um, didn't really stick to, to my game and it kind of went trickle down effect there uh or trickle up effect um 
on your goal, how important is it to have the patience? I saw you, you fake the shot first to kind of pull him to the post, and then <laughs> that's what you saw. And then, that's what it was. That's what uh, it was. Oh, that's that's yeah, that's great. Yeah, perfect. That's exactly what I did. Um, no, okay. <laughs> that's what it looked like. No, it was a great pass. Um, I really wanted to kind of one tee that, and um, you know, confidence isn't through the roof, you know, but um, you know, I was able to hold on to it and. And, you know, following uh, that game, yeah, again, in my opinion, his goal was what really was a big momentum shift uh, for the Hurricanes. But, you know, following that one, there was, you know, the Leafs tying it up at three again, you know, and Austin Matthews goal. Yeah, that was really controversial at the time, you know, because the whistle had been blown, but it was blown early and the goal ended up counting. But, you know, Sebastian Ajo, he ended up taking matters into his own hands. And about 30, 32 seconds later, down the ice, uh, gives the Hurricanes the lead back. And, you know, I feel that, you know, they were, they were like, you know, they agreed with everyone else uh, that the whistle had been blown. That's no goal. And, you know, I think that may have fired them up a bit and we're like, you know, screw this. You know, we're going and getting our lead back. And, you know, obviously, you know, you heard Nazan talking about, you know, the extra passes and doing too much. And I agree, you know, I think that was an issue in this game against the Leafs. I think, you know, it was an issue in the game against the Bruins. They're just kind of overthinking. And, you know, I think that they're trying to, they're getting in their own heads a bit. And they're like, okay, you know, they're looking, okay, we're going up against Austin Matthews or something like that. We really got to be on our A game against that when, you know, and they try to, you know, do all this crazy stuff. And you know, they don't need to do all the crazy stuff. But again, we did hear get to hear from Sebastian Ajo after the game against the Leafs. And this is what Sebastian Ajo, who scored that game winning goal, had to say. Obviously, which you can't stop it. All of them. So, but anyways, he uh, he was really good today. So, kept us alive all night, and then just uh, yeah, keep keep pushing the third. How important is that penalty kill at the start of the third? Obviously, they had a ton of momentum coming out of the second. Yeah. To kill that off, and then obviously Steph scores after. That. Yeah, I felt like all night we were pretty solid in the PK. I mean, everyone knows they uh, they got high high skill in that lineup and, and uh, a bunch of goal scorers there. So, uh, yeah, overall, really good job and gave us uh, momentum for sure. Sebastian, the mission now kind of becomes staying healthy, perfecting the craft instead of winning as many games as possible to get into the playoffs because you guys are already there. So how do you kind of keep doing that? How do you keep following a trend you guys need to do? It's cool. One or no, that's been uh, uh, kind of cliche as or not, but like it, it's, uh, it's how we... Uh, we try to live by, and, and uh, we've been doing a pretty good job overall all, all year. Uh, just, you know, going one and no and not thinking about too much ahead or, or in the past. So, uh, yeah, that's the that's the main focus on the, the rest of the way. Can the same be said for shift after shift? Obviously, it would have been easy to get pretty down after they, they count that goal uh, for Matthews late in the game. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess there's two options, keep going and, stick with it or just kind of uh drop your shoulders and and let it go so uh yeah we definitely did a good job to bounce back and didn't uh you know change too much how we uh how we approach the next shift how tough has the stretch game been for you guys i mean you got the bruins next no it's awesome i mean great teams we play and uh, a lot of games and uh you know just uh Shorter time, it's a short period of time, so uh, I, I like it. It's just uh, it's a good, good time of the year. It's important to you win the division. Do you think that's important? <coughs> I mean, as that's, many games as possible. So right. Right. Um, I guess you never know how important those things are because you don't know. But obviously, we just, like I said, we try to go one and all. We try to win every game, every single game. And, and uh, give us a uh, best chance to you know, be in a good position after the postseason. So in listening to Sebastian Ajo, you know, you know talking about, you know, it's something Steph Nason was talking about as well, of the stretch of games they're on. You know, they had their um, home and home with the Rangers. They played the Leafs and then now the Bruins. And then they got the Lightning here in, I believe, tomorrow. So, you know, they're, on a extremely tough uh 
stretch of games. And like Steph Nays, it's almost playoff hockey. And I think, you know, the Hurricanes really need to stick to their game and not try to do too much. And a big thing for me in this game against the Leafs and in the game against the Bruins was just how many opportunities they're giving the other team. Yeah, they were able to come up with the win. They got points in both of these games, which is great, you know, especially with New Jersey right on their heels as well. I believe there's three points back now. And they cannot be giving up these kinds of opportunities and because you do that kind of thing in the playoffs, you're not going to be guaranteed a win. And, you know, you look at, you know, what happened in this game against the Leafs and, you know, you gave them so many opportunities. You really had to work your butt off to come away with the win. You did it against the Bruins and yeah, you went to a shootout, but you know, you could have, easily you know, just won that game and you know had they not given up those opportunities it because yeah you know they were without a lot of key pieces given they still did have uh well now 51 goal score david Pasternak. so i think a lot of folks you know on both sides are overlooking that one there um but yeah the hurricanes are giving up way too many opportunities right now and, you know, because again, you know, look at those expected goals. Leafs should have really won that game, you know, six, two, but you know, the hurricanes got lucky here. And we did get to hear from Rod Brindamore after that game against the Leafs. And we will hear what Rod had to say right after this quick break, folks. Now, folks, it is obviously very important to be taking care of yourselves. And, you know, one thing that everyone can do to help take care of themselves is, take a good multivitamin and a really good multivitamin for you to take is athletic greens and tons of people take some kind of multivitamin and it's important to choose one with high quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb just don't be getting some random stuff that's just going to be going straight through you ag1 is a small micro habit with big benefits it's one thing you can do every single day to help take care of yourself and your subscription comes with a year's supply of vitamin D. So if you're not able to get outside a whole lot, yeah, there you go. They're here to help you out. And it's also lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free or gluten free. And it also contains less than one gram of sugar with no artificial anything, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything while still tasting good. And a good thing is it helps support better sleep quality and recovery supports mental clarity and alertness and it's the one thing with the best things because athletic greens uses the best of the best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third party testing and it, right now it is time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition it's just one scoop in a cup of water every day that's it no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health and to make it easy for you, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Now, Diving back into you know, the game against the Leafs, you know, we did get to hear from Rod Brendamore following that game, and we'll listen to what he had to say before we dive into the game against the Bruins. And this is what Rod had to say post-Toronto Maple Leafs game. Game with a lot of twists and turns. Yeah, it sure was. Yeah. You guys like you had to get off the, the canvas a couple times there, whether it was the, that entire middle 30 minutes or even that goal late. And we talked about the team's resiliency plenty, and I imagine that's the, the theme again tonight. Yeah, I don't know. I thought we had a good first period, and then you know this the, their world class talent took over, and we just watched it happen. And I tip my hat to them because they played a really good game. I mean, after the first, I don't think they probably would have liked how their first period looked, but um, 
yeah, that's, uh, that was, <laughs> I didn't really know what we were doing. And they, they were just coming in waves and, um, you know, it wasn't for a goalie, you know, obviously we wouldn't want, but it's funny how it goes because the two, first two games we played that team, I thought we deserved way better. And then tonight we didn't deserve that, but, you know, sometimes it, it, it evens out. I think Matthews had 15 shots. Yeah, he, well, he's, he's a world, I mean, that's what world-class players do. And then you stick another one beside him. It's tough to handle them, especially when you're off. Like, when we're not playing our best. And, I mean, I tip my hat to those guys that they, you know, they play a great game, and he especially was dominant. But we found a way, like you said. I mean, at the end of the day, our goalie was great. And we really haven't had a game where, all year, to be honest with you, I felt like this, where it wasn't for the goalie, we don't have a chance. Um, but we've done that a lot against us, like where their goalie steals a game. I mean, most of our losses have come that way, so I think we were, we were, we were deserving of one of those. Special teams you talk about a lot is, you know, often the difference in the game. I know you're saying the goalie obviously played great, but it gets lost maybe, get the five on three goal early, get mm -hmm. a little cushion, and then that, it seemed like that kill at the beginning of the third really kind of set you guys in range. That was the good kill. The other one was, you know, again, it was more cooch than it was us killing it. Um, he made some big saves. The, the last one was a little better, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, power play goal was nice to get one. Just kind of at least got us going, and I thought, like I said, I thought we built a real good first period, uh, but then it just kind of went the other way. But, I'm not gonna be talking about this tomorrow, you know. Did you feel like the, the group of five defending was a, a little scrambly or anything, or did you just attribute that all to yeah. how well they moved the puck? Yeah, through the time? a bit of both, but more what they were doing, and we were watching. When we went to the phase there, we just started watching, and giving them all that time, and you give any player in this league time, but you give players like that a little bit of cushion, that's what it looks like, so. We haven't had many games like that, um, so hopefully we don't see too many more. So obviously it's not that often that y'all get outshot in the game, and it was a pretty big disparity. So do you attribute that all to Chekhov stopping shots and still getting the win, or is there anything in your defense that shifted in that moment? <clears throat> well, that's what we've been talking about. We just we were a little off, and they were, like I said, I tipped my hat to that team. They were on it. After the first, they were they were good and we weren't, and mm -hmm. that's how it looks like. So unless you have a goalie making saves, you're gonna be in trouble, and um, that's basically what happened. I asked Piotr briefly. I said, "Was that fun?" He said, "No." I said, "Was it work?" And he said, "Work." Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> they got the goalie. Our goalies got to work once in a while. You know, we, we we do a pretty good job not giving them too much work, but tonight we certainly didn't do that. Nate Mason was saying, I think Ahn said the same thing. You're playing really tough competition in this stretch, but. These are the kind of games you're going to have in the playoffs, too. So it's, kind of it's, yeah, it's getting us ready. I mean, it's no easy game ever, but. So we obviously you know, heard what Rod had to say. And again, you know, had a good first period, but then the Hurricanes kind of fell off in the second. They're able to come back. But, you know, diving into that game against the Bruins now. This is the one that, you know, everyone is talking about today. You know, it was Whalers night and, you know, that's always fun even if it's not my personal cup of tea anymore but you know the hurricanes they made a really good comeback in this game and you know i think you know like i said earlier yeah the bruins you know were without a lot of key pieces but they still did have their now 51 goal scoring david posternock in the lineup and you know, that was a big, big difference maker. Yeah, he scored two goals in that game. And, you know, he basically won it for the Bruins, you know, again, with those two goals. But, you know, the Hurricanes, you know, and, you know, I think that, you know, Hurricanes, you know, they were, they were, again, trying to do too much, in my opinion. And they they almost looked a bit off at times and they looked like they're playing on their heels. And, you know, I think, you know, the hurricanes, you know, they were really able to get them that momentum back in the third period and have something going because outside of that Jack Drury goal, it just felt like it was all Bruins a lot. And, 
that the Hurricanes, you know, they were really, again, just on their heels. And that third period with Brady Shea and Sebastian Ajo coming up big, scoring those goals, forcing, you know, overtime, I think that was really, really big for them and kind of showed that, you know, it doesn't matter what the score is, that they're still just going to continue fighting. And they're always really, really resilient. But, you know, the controversy I alluded to earlier is, you know, a lot of people today saying Freddie Anderson is washed. He needs to be gone. Blah blah. They're just riding him, and I don't get it. I do not get it, Freddie. Yeah, yeah. Some of his goals, you know, weren't good. You know, that first pass goal, yes, ugly. But every goal, every goalie has ugly goals. Piotr has ugly goals. Auntie Ronza has ugly goals. You know, you go down the list of NHL goalies they've all let in ugly goals and for them to you know, be calling for Freddie's head the way they are and saying he's terrible and he's washed. I, that's ridiculous. People need to go touch grass. Uh, and I, I don't agree with it at all. He was really excellent in, you know, aside from that, you know, first goal in the first period, you know, he was great in the first second period, kind of the whole team wasn't great, but still Freddie was really keeping them within you know, some sort of, you know, shot of winning the game. And then in the third period and overtime, he was absolutely phenomenal. And he was a big reason why we were even able to get to shoot up. Really, my only criticism with Freddie in the game is in the shootout, where I think, you know, he kind of just overthinks it too much. And that's just not in that game against the Bruins. I think that's kind of, you know, every time he's in shootout, I feel, you know, he sometimes just overthinks it. And I think that was the case in that shootout last night. I think he just kind of overthought it. But, you know, we did get to hear from Jack Drury and Rod Brindamore following that game against the Bruins. And we will hear what they had to say right after this quick break, folks. Now, folks, you know, it's starting to get warmer outside. You're going to be wanting some healthy treats, you know, when you're going out there, going to the gym, going on a hike, whatever. And Built Bar is the treat for you. And Folks, you know, we've talked about Built Bar a lot here on the show, but if you're new here, you're going to be asking yourself what makes Built Bar so good. And well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. That is real chocolate, no artificial stuff or anything like that. And they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, coconut, almond, and my personal favorite, peanut butter brownie. And not only do they taste like a candy bar, they're also extremely healthy with only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and 17 grams of protein. And, of course, they have you know a whole bunch of flavors on their website at Built.com. But if you want some right now, you can go to your local Walmart. Or if he has a Sam's Club membership, you can go there as well. So you can head to Walmart and get a 4-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. I'd go with the double chocolate. Or if you have a Sam's Club membership, you can go grab a 13-bar box with their flavors of brownie batter and churro. You cannot go wrong with that one right there. And I think the ones I saw at Sam's the other day do have a bonus bar of a double chocolate in there as well. And if again, if none of those flavors interest you, go to the website built.com and you will find a whole bunch of stuff. They have something for everyone. Now, again, we did get here from Jack Drury, who scored the first goal. Uh, with an assist from his Calder winning, uh, Calder Cup winning teammate Jalen Chatfield, and this is what Jack Drury had to say following that game against the Bruins. Jack, you gotta like the resilience overall of what this team's done. You know, last night and then again tonight. You know, obviously not two points, but pretty good to get one out of this. That was a good third period. Uh, I think gotta take the positives from that and. Uh, you know, work on what we need to moving forward. Well, extra special to score in this particular gear. Yeah, it's it's cool. It's definitely cool. Uh, you know, had a lot of pictures of my dad playing there as a kid, so it's special. On your goal, can you just walk us through that a little bit? Uh, it's good offensive zone shift. Uh, Stas and Stepper just grinding it down low, and Chatty made a great play coming down the wall and just finished it. What's this week been like for you guys? Kind of a gauntlet of Eastern Conference playoff teams. It's a good challenge. I think, uh, you know, you want to be playing the toughest teams and it's great preparation for the playoffs. So I think we're embracing it and it'll be another great test on Tuesday. 
You mentioned taking away the, the lessons learned from this game, but I mean, able to come back from a 3-1 deficit and then against one of the best teams, if not the best team in the league, uh, how does that feel and what do you guys take from that? That's big. I think uh, we know we're not out of any game and we know the formula and how we need to play to be successful. So it's just sticking to that and being consistent with that moving forward. Do you feel like it, does, it really shows you guys that you can do that even postseason play and that it, it's a good reminder that anything's possible? 100%. I think uh, we get a lot of confidence in this group and we're excited to see what we can do down the stretch here. What do you think the biggest difference was in this game? Uh, it's a shootout. I mean, it's it's a close game. Just comes down to a couple couple plays at the end. But like I said, it's two really good hockey teams. And uh, I think the third period, we kind of saw how we need to play. Uh, so we'll kind of try to replicate that moving forward. Did you guys tell Freddie anything? It seemed like there was a big shift in his play between the first period and especially the second and third. He made some unbelievable saves. No, I think uh, Freddie's an incredible goaltender. Uh, we got a lot of trust in him, and we know throughout the course of a game he's going to come up with a lot of big saves, and he certainly did. Tonight. Yeah, Freddie, he really kept the Hurricanes in that. And like Jack said, you know, I think that you know this stretch that they're on right now is very tough and is showing them areas they need to work on. And like I said earlier, uh, the opportunities that they're giving up are really big and they got to, they really got to nip that in the bud and start to get that in line heading into, you know, the playoffs. And I think, you know, especially, I mean, you, we've been able to see it in really every game, that he's been out, but really in this game against the Bruins, you could really feel Andrei Svechnikov not being there. You know, he's automatic in uh, shootouts, and guess what? The Hurricanes lost in a shootout. So, and again, we've been feeling it in a lot of games, whether it be the offense, you know, not showing up, whether it be you know, these defensive uh, lapses, you know, you know, just really feeling, you know, Andre being out because he was such a good two way forward. He's good on the offensive end. He's good on the uh, defensive side as well. And really feeling him being out. And I think you know, this is a, this kind of shows that, hey, you know, may, we may need to work out on some shootout some more. And yeah, I know you're not going to have that in the playoffs, but just going forward, in general, I think shootout needs to be something that some guys practice a bit more. And, you know, again, it's not something that happens, you know, super, super often. So, again, I understand, hey, yeah, they may not practice it very, very often. But, again, it, this kind of shows just, like, the how big of a role Andre Sveshikov plays on the team and again, especially in the shootout, but we did get to hear from Brad Burnamore after the game against the Bruins. And this is what he had to say following that game. Brad, it's a little bit kind of the same story as last night. It seems like you can't really count your guys out, even when things maybe don't look like they're going to the right way. Yes, they dig in all the time. I mean, that's one thing I'm, I think, you know, most proud of the group is just we, we whatever way it's going, we seem to always, you know, if it's not going right or we get a bad call or something, they just they keep playing. I mean, um, so it was, it was, you know, it wasn't a, our best game, but I thought third period we certainly came on and, you know, got, it's one of those games you say that's probably a good point to get out of considering how it was looking. Do your young guys learn to shake things off? Like, I know, I know you weren't happy with that, that penalty call. Uh, in the second, well, was it a penalty? Uh, it was a penalty call, at least. I okay. <laughs> I mean, let's just be honest about it. It's yeah. not a penalty. That, that that frustrating part is you're giving it. It's you know, yeah, you got to kill it, yeah. get it. But you're handing you know a pretty good player. You're gonna he's gonna get his opportunity. And it's just like, so it it's hard when that's I feel like you're just tossing him a goal. Um, but you do have to kill it. I mean, I get it. But your young guy. I mean, the way yeah. your young guys can can lean on the older guys and know that. Adversity like that is, you know, something. Well, it was. It's probably overdone in in some ways. You just what's done is done. You know, you, then you. It's always about your next shift, and everyone talks about that. So it's you control what you can control, and just go and play. And that's really what we do. I think. Did the week that you just had going into you know, Toronto, Boston, New York, give you a picture of where you guys are yeah. at for playoffs? Well, it it gives you certainly an idea of what the top teams are like. You know, you know how hard it's going to be. Not that you didn't know. 
but certainly, you know, these, these teams are ramping it up, and um, you know, they got some elite, elite, high-end players, and they're they're difference makers, as you you can see. Is is the team still adjusting? You think to the loss of such stuff, or do you feel like enough time's gone by now? We've got enough feedback. Um, no, I think there's still a little. You know, feeling out period because there's you know he did so much for us in in that kind of offensive, just threat mentality, and you know we we don't really can't replace that. So, um, you know, trying to find different ways to get it done. What does it say about Freddie making that shift that he made from the end of the first period to the second and third period? He had some unbelievable saves, but in the first he clearly struggled a little bit. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. I thought he actually made some good saves in the first because we gave up all our the majority of our chances were in the first period that we gave up and you know he, he I thought he was did a, did a pretty good job there to keep us at least able to you know, within striking distance there and, and we were able to tie it up and then obviously that incident we're talking about kind of I thought turned the game for that second period anyway. You mentioned we talked about Spencer a couple a little bit and it seems like Aho has really seized on that and made really big plays this system. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, we understand that he's got to step up. I mean, that's he's our best player, and now it's it's not all on him, but he's, you can see we need it. And uh, he's been, you know, solid as ever. And, and, and then other guys, too, but obviously him scoring goals, that's that's what we got to have. How many? That's just because they had another goal for Shea. Yeah. Well, that's, you know. He's been having a great year, and so we're picking up, you know, goals maybe from places that you know we didn't think we were gonna necessarily have. It. That's well, we have to have it. I mean, there's just no way around it. Did you peek at the at the NCAA yeah, score? I did. The I did not throughout. It was just one time. Um, I actually saw the first period. It was on, so that was good. And then I was like, I gotta know if they, you know. So I did peek in there uh, after the second just to get an update. You like that shut down, shut down a game for. For your son and their guy. I don't, yeah, I just thought they won, and that's, that's great. I'm happy for them. All right, thanks, okay, guys, thank you. Yeah, so in listening to Rod, you know, what he had to say, uh, you know, the Hurricanes, you know, giving up a lot of good chances. Can't be doing that. And, you know, while I mentioned, you know, they do need guys to step up to make up for the loss of Andrei Svechnikov and Max Pacioretty as well, you know, for the brief time, you know, he played this season, he was definitely really, really good for the team. But they are having guys step up. You know, Sebastian Ajo, he's really, you know, we already know he was a star, but he's being even more of a star. Brady Shea, you know, continuing to have a great season. But again, you know, my big thing is, you know, they have really, really got to stop giving up so many opportunities to these teams. And, you know, because it's not, you're not going to be able to get away with this in the playoffs. You know, yeah, you are able to, come back, tie it, force overtime with the best team in the NHL. And, you know, going down in history is one of, one of if, you know, on paper, maybe not the greatest regular season team ever in the NHL. You know, the Bruins are on a historic run this year. So the fact that the Hurricanes were able to, you know, force overtime, come back the way they did, that's great. But again, these are, this is regular season still. Yeah, it feels, you know, kind of, playoff ask but you know at the end of the day this is still the regular season you know you still got you know games to play it, you know you're not going to go home you know after you, know, you lose this game against the Bruins but you know here in a, in a few more weeks that'll be the case and you're not going to be able to get away with the mistakes and these opportunities that you're giving up because in the playoffs teams are going to see hey, this defensive lapse, and they're going to exploit it 10 times as hard as they would in the regular season. So they have really, really got to clean that stuff up. And you know, if they're wanting to make a deep run in the playoffs, again, they, the Hurricanes are a very good team. They're the second best team in the NHL. But at the end of the day, you, know, you are missing you know, some key pieces. And you know they're going to need to have guys continue to step up, fill in the role, uh, fill in the hole that Andre left, you know, when he went down, fill in the hole that Max Pacioretty uh, left when he went down again. So they're going, they got a lot of work to do, but I do think that this stretch that they're on and 
you know, will continue to be on, you know, tomorrow against Tampa Bay is a good measuring stick and it'll be good film to go back and watch. And that way they can, you know, kind of see, you know, because a lot of these, uh, the Bruins, the Leafs, the Lightning, these are teams that they could very well play in the playoffs, you know, come, you know, conference final time. You know, it, it, these are all teams that they could play. So they need to be on their A game and know what to do and what not to do against these teams come playoff time. And at the end of the day, we got to get to this game against the Bruins or the the bolts excuse me uh and then you know just keep going forward and keep uh persevering you know through you know having these guys out you know these comeback losses or these comeback wins uh these and just all these games where the hurricanes are coming back and they need to continue to be that resilient team and not give up and if they can, can keep doing that and then minimize the mistakes that they're making, they can very much so make a deep run in the playoffs. But we will talk about all of that as time goes on. So in the meantime, make sure you are following the show on Twitter and Instagram at LO underscore Hurricanes and myself on Twitter at Jared Ellis underscore 96. And I will talk to you guys in tomorrow's episode when we preview the game against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And as always, let's go Canes.